There's too many of them to fight. They're all around me staring with their dead, hungry eyes. Like ghouls run a corpse. And we just the game walk through the press of bodies. Looks like they got first dibs of taking me apart with their bare hands. It goes black. I feel nothing. Not even the scarce beating they administer after I'm unconscious. But I'm alive. When my eyesight returns, I find myself lying in bed, bandaged and naked, sitting in a rundown apartment. Not much different from my own. It takes me a few seconds to become oriented, and I realize I'm not alone. A middle-aged woman, mid-forties perhaps, is entering the room with a bowl. I can smell the aroma from my bed. Gambles. I sit up, my side's still leak and I wince with pain. She rushes to my side to help. After my soup, I sit up feeling better and eager to find out more about my host. She lays out the whole story for me, finding my body in the alley behind her house, taking me in and nursing me to health. Apparently it's been almost two weeks. She's a warrior. Valkyrie come to my aid. I tell her about my history, how I came to be in her company, the kidnapping, my daughter. I don't know what I've said, but it upset her. Between sobs, she tells me her own son has gone missing. He's been missing a few weeks ago, and there's been no word. She says the police have a man investigating, but nothing's come of it save for a small lead. Small lead. That's all I need. She mentions an old farmhouse in the countryside. Said the officer briefly talked about it. My joints ache, but I bear the pain like so many times before. She pleads for me to stay. Says I need to rest. I don't know what I'll find, but I asked to borrow her car. Tell her to stay behind. I couldn't bear another. Don't talk about your daughter in the past tense, old man. Can't think like that. You'll find her. And, if you're lucky, help a friend too. I wear that much. I wear my life. It goes black. I'd have to decide. Should I follow this new lead, or continue with Marconi's tip about Phylax? Sniper fire. Something told me this wasn't gonna be that easy.
<laughs> I could try starting the generator, or I could probably siphon gas for the chainsaw. Through the fog, I see a hulking behemoth striding my direction. He's huge. Goliath to my David. Thirty stones easy. He doesn't speak. His heavy brow hides the gaze of his eyes. I sense a rage welling up inside me, greater than I have ever felt. It's time to foul this son of a bitch now. He's huge, but that means he has huge guts. Rip and tear. strike the corpse's head over and over again until it's little left but soft chunks and enough teeth for dental identification. Spit on the body for good measure. Feels good. Too good. I find my way back through the woods to the car. I got plenty of time to think about what happened. What I've seen. The worst nightmares of any man. Could not have prepared me for what I saw. How am I gonna break it to my savior? Her son. I return to the house where my guardian angel lives, trying to break the news to her. She's strong. She takes it better than I imagined. But it's still a waterfall of tears and heavy breathing. She holds me tight, arms around my neck crying in my shoulder. I fall asleep, Mary and I. She says her name is Mary. That was 10 years ago. Since then I took a job working on a military camp outside of town, and Mary went back to nursing. We got two boys, Simon and Nathan, five and eight respectively. Things have been doing well for us since then. We stopped drinking and made a new start. And every night, I still think about my daughter. What happened to her? Where is she now? Some days my imagination gets the best of me. Once ago I caught eyes with a young woman, mid-20s, out of a limousine. She's one of those strong business types. And gorgeous, I might add. What seemed like minutes, but it was a matter of seconds. We stared at each other and thought we had once known each other. She turned away and went inside. Damn imagination.